So today's uh, snippet is called morning reports and patient rounds, finding clinical information at the point of care. My name is Alexander Lubichansky, and I work at the University of Nevada, Reno, the School of Medicine, and I'm clinical librarian. So this is part of the series organized by librarians at osteopathic medical schools to help you advance your research skills and support your scholarly activities. And you today, hopefully you will learn something about one clinical librarian's experience in participating in hospital morning reports and patient rounds. So this is uh, my personal short story about participation in hospital morning reports and patient rounds that took place uh, that took place between 2017 and 2020, and uh, it took place at the renowned regional medical center and University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine. Renowned Regional Medical Center is a close partner of our medical school. It has uh, over 900 licensed beds and some 1,200 physicians have privileges there. And our school is the oldest medical school in Nevada. It was established in 1969. We have great residency programs in family medicine, internal medicine, psychiatry, uh, pediatrics. We also have fellowships in child and adolescent psychiatry, geriatric medicine, palliative medicine, and primary care sports medicine. So who was participating in this? Who are the characters in this story that I'm going to tell you today? It's mainly clinical faculty, and you will hear me uh, using interchangeably faculty and attending, basically, these this are the people, residents, fellows, students, third and fourth year medical students, and myself. Why did we decide to do this? Well, for starters, um, I had previous experience uh, with uh, patient rounds. Until 2017, our residency program was in Las Vegas. And I served there, uh, our residents and our uh, third and fourth year students on clerkships. And when residency moved to Reno, I moved along. Since I had some experience in this patient rounds, as I mentioned, I thought it would be nice to try it out in Reno at, at renowned hospital. And we in the library saw it as an opportunity to be more involved with people we serve. And uh, at that time, we already opened two satellite libraries, one of them in a, re a, re a renowned regional medical center and another at the Moana Clinic. So librarian, clinical librarian, and I'm talking about myself, was to be present there anyway. So how did we start? Well, uh, medical library director and I identified the persons who could help us with this project. We met, we shared our vision with them, and together we came up with a plan. And uh, I was invited to attend hospital morning report initially once a week. And I must say that people that we met with uh, were very supportive of our idea, uh, particularly a chair of the committee for uh, uh, third and fourth year students clerkship directors and uh, senior associate dean of academic affairs. So that those people were super helpful. So after attending uh, several, I would say a couple of uh, morning reports as an observer, I learned the process 
I met clinical faculty, residents, students, and I basically started participating. And But I must say that this first couple times when I was there as an observer were very useful, very useful to me. So how these morning reports were organized? They typically started at 8 a.m., sometimes earlier, and went till 9 a.m. And they took place several times per week. Uh, all participants gathered uh, in a large conference room, very well equipped technically, technologically. And that was adjacent to doctor's lounge. So physicians uh, who wanted to participate uh, besides faculty were welcome. Uh, presenting team, sometimes there was one presenting team, sometimes there were two. So presenting team would come in advance and they would lay out the, uh, they would outline the basic information about the case they would discuss on the whiteboard. When everyone gathered, they would start presentation and usually presenter was resident who asked questions uh, based on the, those clinical features or initial findings that they outlined, solicited feedback, could be regarding differential or tests or uh, symptoms, whatever. And this discussion ensued and gradually a presenter would provide more information. And at that point, faculty would uh, get involved. They would ask questions and they would answer questions if, they if people asked them. So until a complete picture of the case came into view and th they would, they would summarize the case. They would decide that uh, this is the treatment, this is how we're doing, or if there was an outcome already known, they would report the outcome. Uh, at that point, it was the turn of medical students who were also part of presenting team to make a brief presentation based on the case. And maybe it could be etiology or they would talk about management or prognosis. Sometimes they would concentrate on one particular feature, but basically it was an overview. And uh, I, uh, this, uh, I would ask them after they finished presentation, or maybe I would make my comments about bibliography they used, for example, or how did they find this information what databases they used to find it and so on. And at that point, people were asking questions sometimes of me. After students presentation, it was my official turn. So I typically was given 10 to 12 minutes. And I must tell you, this is a lot for, for, uh, for morning reports because time is very short, you know, and time is of essence for them. There were times when I had only five minutes. And at the same time, there were times when I had 20 minutes. So it depends. And this was a great opportunity for me to demonstrate different features or search techniques of selected resources. And I actually did live searches there. Oftentimes they would ask me right there to search for a topic. Most of the time I would do the search related to uh, case discussed, or there were situations when faculty asked me in advance to concentrate on a particular topic. I used that opportunity also to show uh, people who were present uh, different resources that we have and remind them about some new resources. Uh, for example, we could search for specific drug therapy, maybe in Dynamet and compare it to Lexicomp. Sometimes we would uh, use clinical queries or we would look at the PICO search feature in Embase. It could be anything. That was a great, great uh, opportunity to discuss what we have and to answer questions. And I always had questions asked of me, either by faculty or by residents and students. So that was a great chance for me to answer. Now, did I join rounding uh, right away? No, it didn't happen like that. After participating in a number of morning reports, uh, we had some discussions with 
program director, residency program director in internal medicine and uh, associate director, associate program director. And then I met with chief residents. And I think they in turn had some meetings with people in the hospital. And we decided that I'll be joining them uh, in, in, in the rounds. So how these patient rounds were organized? Well, at the end of morning report, all present were divided into teams. There were several teams and I think they were color coded there. So typically each team included one faculty, one resident, couple students, pharmacy intern. Uh, sometimes there were two residents and maybe three students, but that was seldom. But only one team could have a clinical librarian because there was only one clinical librarian. And I was equipped with iPad, iPhone, a couple of pens, and just a plain notebook, which was very important because you had to take notes sometimes. To my dismay, I wasn't given any scraps, white coat, or stethoscope, not even a pen light. Well, Tim briefly huddled outside uh, the uh, conference room. And we had a discussion led by the attending, by the faculty, who team would see, wh which floor we would go, and what kind of patients we'll see. Then we would go to the floor. And prior to seeing each patient, a resident on our team would provide brief information, at which point, usually nurse would join uh, with any most recent uh, updates regarding a particular patient. And then we would all uh, try to get into the patient room. If sometimes it was possible, sometimes it wasn't possible. Sometimes there were several patients in the room. So uh, at that point, probably some of us would be standing in the door. And attending and resident would examine patient, ask questions. They had this, some short discussion. Uh, there would be brief uh, interchange of ideas or thoughts between attending and the resident and maybe students. Afterward, the most important part was team would gather outside patient room and uh, discuss treatment uh, or maybe some diagnostic uh, features. And attending the faculty would pose questions to students, residents, and librarian. And there was this was a great teachable moment for all of us. I learned a lot at that point. And this was the time when we really have to find we we really had to find information quickly uh, using iPad. And uh, if there were questions related, I would uh, I would look up on. Uh, my iPad, I would use my iPad, I would look up in different databases and I would try to find answers. Or we had to verify information. For example, it could be different types of antibiotics used in treatment of, say, uh, community acquired pneumonia, just an example. And there was a discussion between resident and attending which antibiotic to use better. So we looked up and checked for evidence and the newest uh, guidelines and so on. So what resources did we use during patient rounds? Dynamed, and I must say that uh, mostly you in Dynamed, when we were looking uh, at the topics, the most used uh, sections were, were clinic uh, were uh, diagnosis and management. Yeah, diagnosis and management probably were testing overview probably too. In clinical key, when we used clinical key, uh, clinical overviews, uh, calculators, and guidelines. In PubMed, probably clinical queries. And Lexicomp is a drug-based uh, resource. Embase, we seldom used, just a couple times. So if you ask me which resource we use most of the time, I would say Dynamed. At that time, we did not have Isabel with Dynamed. Now we have Dynamed with Isabel. And if we renew this, uh, say, patient rounding again, 
uh, I would and and morning reports. I would say we could use uh, students could use it for uh, uh, learning purposes uh, because so here's two screenshots. So if we put clinical features here in Isabel, and then we pull out the all the differential here. Suppose we think that this is this is more suspicious to us. So we click on that and right away it opens this screen. And we see here uh, the topic as described in Dynamed. And we have different sections and we can learn everything about this particular disease or condition. But we asked Isabel to get us some uh, uh, link outs on the left-hand side, you see here. So if we click on general search, it would search PubMed within literally within seconds for every article on this topic. Or we can search for the newest articles or case reports. And we ask them to have case reports because our students and residents uh, always start their research by trying to publish case reports. In clinical key, we would have chapter chapters here or guidelines. And of course, we had a link to Lexicomp. So I would I would use this. I'm not promoting any resource, by the way, and I don't have I should have made disclaimer, but this is what we use and we found it useful. So what were the advantages from librarian's point of view? My personal view on advantages of participating in morning reports. Uh, great opportunity to promote library resources and services and your own service. And you provide information which is really relevant to your learners and clinicians. And this is also a great opportunity to find out what their needs are in clinical setting. Challenges, in my opinion, personal commitment. You really have to be there. If you say you will be there, you have to be there. Um, also, are you up to it? Are you comfortable going to seeing sick people? Maybe you'll be stressed. You think about that. Time constraints, always time constraints. Be prepared to be interrupted. Assumptions. Uh, at the, at the big, in the beginning, I had wrong assumptions. I thought they know more about uh, searching. They thought I knew more about medical terminology. Hesitation to ask questions. I noticed that uh, students especially were hesitant to ask questions in front of their peers or in front of their superiors. So what lessons did I learn uh, from this morning reports? One really has to be patient and curious. If you're not curious, it will be very boring to you. You have to be realistic in your expectations. And even though you start being a part of the team and doing important thing and everybody's uh, uh, showing interest, uh, be realistic. You're not clinician, you're librarian. Ration your time is important and of course be prepared for quick changes. What about patient rounds? I think the advantage was that you do provide answers at the point of care and it's not just theoretical, it's you are really there, you're at the patient's bedside. You feel you are part of clinical team they treat you as equal and you feel that you're one of them and you really do important things. Great teachable moments when you learn and when you teach and you participate in this mutual enrichment. And of course, you build trust with your users, with your students and residents. Challenges, irregularity, because patient routes were not as regular as morning reports and oftentimes for whatever reasons they could have been canceled or changed and whatnot. Uh, keep in mind also that there might be some uh, physicians or some faculty who might not be comfortable having librarian on their team, so be prepared for that. Uh, biggest challenge was that you did, I didn't know uh, what clinical issues will be discussing in advance. I could have been prepared better. And there is, of course, physical stress involved. You walk for two hours, maybe on your feet, you're standing or walking all the time. 
at the same time could be mental stress because you try to understand everything you try not to miss something and important thing is connectivity uh, we discovered i discovered hard <laughs> hard way that some parts of the hospital wi-fi connectivity wasn't good and it's it was amazing to discover that some resources open faster than others so lessons learned well ask if you don't understand something ask if you don't know how it's spelled ask uh, know your resources and if connectivity is bad or if one of the of, of your resources is not opening f fast enough be prepared to switch so what do i think myself about this uh, should i recommend people or should i do again morning reports or morning reports and patient rounds or just patient rounds i'd say what's more important is i think from the point of view of reaching out to the audience to a wider audience probably morning reports would be uh would give you more opportunity in that way because you're talking to a large larger group of people and uh, if you can do both that's great so what's next for us uh, we're in the stage of rethinking the whole thing because COVID brought all kind of changes on one hand uh, we have we had this uh, strict you know uh, new regulations on the other hand we are much closer uh, uh, with the hospital we have uh, much better understanding of each other's uh, needs and tasks people sent some questions in advance and i already answered some of these questions during my presentation for example what's the best way to get started it depends on situation right depends on your organization i i told you how we did it i would say find the key uh, stakeholders and uh, talk to them what devices were you using? Um, iPad and iPhone. Is PubMed all I need? Is there something better? I don't know. It depends on your needs. Are you looking for just uh, finding primary literature? If you're doing systematic review, maybe you want to look at other resources, Cochrane and uh, uh, maybe Embase. If you're looking at the point of care resources, I would say uh, maybe you want to look at UpToDate or Dynamed. Is there an effective way to make argument to replace up to date with Dynamed? Do we need both? It depends on your users' preferences. Uh, we have generations of people who grew up with up to date and they don't want to part with it. And maybe you want to show them Dynamed and maybe they will like it if that's the case. Or maybe you can afford both, or maybe you have enough people who would use both or will like. In my, in my case, uh, I keep hearing from our residents on a regular basis that they like Dynamed. At the same time, they have opportunity to use UpToDate in the hospital. Our library does not subscribe to UpToDate. We only have Dynamed, but they have access in the hospitals. Which resources do you like best? How do you access them? iPad, desktop, it depends, yeah, both, or laptop or iPhone. So I have a couple of references here that maybe some of you will find useful. As well, you know that there is a caucus at, in MLA. Uh, uh, MLA has a caucus of clinical librarians, so that might be another source for you, source of information. And next, I have to make an announcement now that you, you should save the date for our next workshop. It will take place on November 10 at 10 to 10.30 Pacific time. And the title is How to Read a Forest Plot and Interpret Box and Whisker Plots. Oh, I can't wait to, I, my, uh, personally, I cannot wait to attend this one. I hope the mystery of Dr. Forrest will be revealed. And that's about it. Thank you very much.